Don't just sit there with that grin on your face. Help me. I'm stuck in some kind of quantum Schrodinger's cat thing where I'm both Santa and not Santa at the same time. I want to apologize in advance. I'm recording this way before this video's release, so all the timing works out. And frankly, before I've actually even made anything. You may see some continuity errors, which I would have gotten away with if it weren't for those meddling kids. Even though it makes no sense, let me give you the low down on the down low. Not all that long ago, a jolly old gang of fellow tubers extended an invitation to participate in a pass the hammer slash hammer throw. Those were fun times, but long story short, that landed me on their mailing list. And this year, yours truly has been invited to be part of their secret Santa extravaganza. For the holiday impaired out there, that means names are drawn from a hat. I can only assume a very fancy top hat. Anyway, we anonymously exchange gifts. As fate would have it, I got Colin Furs. Colin Furs. Now ain't that a kick in the pants. Which I don't mean in a bad way. Far from it. Who's not a fan of that guy? But honestly, I don't really know Colin or any of these crazy kids above and beyond what they put on YouTube. And how do you get a heartfelt gift for someone you don't really know? The kind of gift that'd get them all choked up and, with any luck, brings them to tears. Christmas, after all, is about crying. But Colin, what do you get a guy that has everything? At first, I had what I thought were a couple of bulletproof ideas. Real zingers, as the kids like to say. And after four consecutive sleepless nights, I'd finally come up with ideas and was super excited. But my wife sat me down, and although I still don't quite get the problem, she explained that a tie or a mug with his name on it might not be the best options for the guy. So plan C it is. I'm going to make some logo stamps. Branding irons, maker's mark, I don't know what you call them, but like these. Well, not like these, technically it'd be exactly these. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, because I haven't made them yet. Look, let's just stick to the script, all right? Branding tools. I don't think I've seen him with any of those. This is a winner. He can put his mark right on stuff. Like, just think how many times he must have stumbled out of a bar and ended up taking home someone else's hover bike, wife, or weaponized screw tank. I've got some material here. D3 and O1 tool steels. I'll make some cold stamps out of these. And just because it should be a lot easier to mill, I've got some bronze and some brass. I figure I could do some of those old school cattle style hot irons too. I know Colin likes to play with fire, so big green check there. Though I don't seem to recall him working with wood very much, which is usually what these hot irons are used for, I think or leather, or anything that'd burn, I suppose. But heck, we'll make some anyway. Come on, you Scrooges. 
It's Christmas. Okay, okay, enough screwing around. It's time to get cooking with brass tacks. First thing we'll need is Colin's logo. Now, luckily, I have an official FURS sticker sheet. No expenses spared here at this old Tony. I think I did that wrong. I'm not 100%, but I think this one is the official logo. It's the one at the top of his web and about page at any rate. Then the shirt one. I see that a lot watermarking his videos. And I really like this safety tie road sign looking thing. Unfortunately, what I think is his main logo doesn't translate all that well into a cold stamp. There are some really fine details in the fuse and some shading in the tie. I could clean it up, simplify it so it works, I mean, but I don't wanna be messing with another man's logo. That's just not right. I think I'll do the shirt one, then this one from his mug, the collar and tie, that's classy. But I think I wanna start with the yield to oncoming traffic tie. That'll be an easy one. I like easy. Now this next bit gets a little technical, so I ask you to bear with me. I'll show you how CNC works. First, we need to prep our engineering drawing. Then we walk this over to the CNC machine. Okay, Maho, make me one of these. Think of that. Pretty so so, am I right? And this is a multi tool now. It's got the you're not getting in here without a tie logo and the shirt one. To be honest, there aren't many places you can go to in a tie if you don't have a shirt, too. If you're wondering why this thing is black, on my way back to the bench from the milling machine, I took a little pit stop at the heat treat oven. I thought it'd be nice if Colin could use these more than once, so figured it was best to harden them. These are the two punches cooking away at almost 1800 degrees. Did that for a couple hours and for good measure, since it's the holidays and all, I thought I'd coat them in chocolate. Hardened tools, you just can't beat them, unless the striking end isn't fully hardened, which it isn't. In fact, you might be able to see the quench line here. Maybe. The business end is hard, the striking end, not so much. This should be safe to have at with a hammer. This one, on the other hand, is meant to be used in a press. Probably much too big anyway to leave a mark with a hammer blow. To state the maybe not so obvious, hardened tool steel is quite brittle. If you're lucky and you hit it just right, shards could break off like glass and end up in not happy places. Anyway, while these were cooking, I made bronze versions. Again, same logos, same cam, I just scaled it for this size. These screw onto a handle, then set this whole thing in a coal fire with some country music playing, and when they're good and hot, use to prand anything that might burn. There was a joke in there with some red ink, but that didn't transfer. Again, the hot irons, just for kicks. And with that, my time is up. I've got to ship these off quick. I just wish I had a cooler bag with snowmen or reindeer or something on it. Wait, you know what might be a nice touch?
Little touch of class rarely killed anybody. Now I've really got to quit screwing around and get this out of here. At this rate, I'm liable to ruin Christmas. But one very last important thing, Colin, if you're watching, I'm also including some medicated bandages. Once you stamp something with your logo, be sure to cover it with one of these, lest it get infected. You didn't really think I'd leave you eggheads hanging, did you? Let's talk shop. You can tell I'm serious, because I'm standing at the mill. Not long ago, uh, a month maybe, I opted to buy VCarve. If you've never heard of it, it's a neat little CAD cam package aimed more towards the artsy fartsy crowd. And I say fartsy with the utmost respect. I mean, you could use it for regular parts, maybe, but it's more for fancy woodwork and singing big mouth bass signs for your saloon. It's made by Vectric. They offer three or four variants of it. I got VCarve desktop mostly because of the price. I know a lot of folks out there use Aspire. That's sort of their flagship software, but it's a little pricey. I guess if you do it for a living, it's not terrible. Could I have done this specific Christmas project in Fusion? Yes, for sure. Graphics I picked weren't that complicated, but I wanted to kick the V-carved tires a bit, so I'm ready for the grand opening of my saloon. Let's do a super fast, super simple run through of V-carve. This is not a tutorial. I'm still only dipping my toes myself, but thought I'd share. Oh, and this isn't an endorsement of any kind. No affiliation. I hate that I always have to say stuff like that. Okay, piece of wood, four inch by, I don't know, 10-ish, a little bit more. Rough sawn and scrubbed on one side. A little wedge shaped. I don't own a thickness planer. This might not come out perfect, but let's cut some text into it. This is VCarve. Let's start a new project and the first thing we get is this job setup. More or less like you'd expect, I think. Single sided is fine. We'll put in the size of the workpiece. 10 inches wide, 4 inches high, about 5 eighths of an inch thick. We're already working with Cherry, so I'll leave this as is. If you don't have Cherry, make sure you change this or nothing will work. Big picture, on the left we have all our geometry and editing tools. Everything we need to make the CAD, as it were. That's our blank slate in the middle. And on the right is the CAM toolbar, where you'd set up all the machining operations. Since we're just engraving text, a good opening move might be to grab the text tool. And we'll type some text. And we'll pick a font with a little more spunk. Frankly, the way this handles text alone is worth the price of admission. This thing has a lot of good tools for modifying, sizing, placing, and wrapping text. How many times have you tried to download and wrestle with stick fonts that work with Fusion's cam? If you answered never, I'll just forget I asked. And that's it, that's our CAD. We'll head over to the cam side of things. Here you'll find the equivalent of what you see in Fusion where you're picking the type of machining strategy you want to use, depending on what you're trying to do. I was surprised to find thread milling in here. Then there's a host of, I don't know, wood-specific strategies. Stuff for cutting textures, engraving photos, reliefs, molding, some neat stuff. But for what we're doing, we'll just pick its namesake, V-Carve. I won't get into any of these options, we'll just V-Carve for now. It's already got my V-Bit selected. I don't need to do any material cleaning before carving, so I'll uncheck that and hit Calculate. Just like that, toolpaths are ready to go. Hit save toolpath, put it on a thumb drive or whatever, and walk it over to the CNC machine. In our setup, we told Vsauce that our origin was on the center of the top face. I'm not going to bother indicating this in. I'll just scribe some diagonals and call that good enough. Partial disclosure, I did go back and make one edit you didn't see. In the simulation, I noticed my cutting parameters were still set up for metal, so I just went back and made them a bit more aggressive. It just didn't need that many passes to cut wood.
Pretty cool, huh? Again, totally doable in Fusion or SolidWorks or what have you, but it'd be a lot more painful. And one more trick VCarve has up its sleeve is its ability to deal directly with images. It has built-in vector conversion therapy, which can turn your photos into clean lines you can toolpath. That's how I did all of Colin's logos. Again, I know there's other software that does just that. You can convert your image to a vector and then import it into your CAM software. But this thing just makes it so easy. someone at the door. Usually, if I stay really, really still for like 20 minutes, they'll go away. Dang it. They must have seen the lights on and the milling machine running and me talking to my camera. Hold on. I'll be right. <gasps> I got a gift. I wonder if it's the puppy I asked for. I think it could be. Oh my stars. It's from Alan Pan of Sufficiently Advanced. This is super exciting. A little scary, but super exciting. Oh, and you know what this also means? I'm not Santa. He is. Whew, that's a load off. I'm not exactly sure what I'm... Looks like a steak knife maybe with open sights? No. What could this... I'm a little nervous. Any of you familiar with Alan probably know why. Yes, I think this is absolutely perfect. Is this too much? Is this? Hold on, I think I saw a letter in here. Merry Christmas, this old Tony, and God help you. By the way, I'm not reading this out loud. This is actually one of those scenes where I'm in my pajamas on my bed reading a letter, but you can hear the voice in my head so you know what I'm reading. Right now you're hearing the voice in my head. Merry Christmas, this old Tony, and God help you. Since you already have an ultrasonic cutter, I figured you'd like an infrasonic cutter to complete your collection. It does exactly what it looks like. It may violently wobble laterally. Usually, in quotation marks, it straightens out after a few moments. If not, try changing the speed. It might explode at the highest setting. I don't know, I haven't tried it. All right, I think I know what's going on here. I think these go this way. No, it's not right. That looks a little stabby. I really hope that clears the tool. <laughs> There's the wobble. Why is it picking up speed? It's on one. I should put on some safety glasses. Oh my, I'll be honest with you, I was expecting, or maybe hoping, for, you know, a little comedic failure there. Alan, you're a genius. What's kind of cool is half the knife is doing a sawing motion, and like the tip is doing more of a chopping motion, because of the rotation around the center. I have like 85% control of this thing. What? I can't believe it made it through that tin can. As is tradition, there's one final test. Just so you know, I have a neighbor with goats. This tin can won't go to waste. But Alan, if you're taking orders, I need three more of these. Takes a little getting used to, but man, I wasn't expecting that. Thanks, buddy. So I think I'm gonna wrap this up here while I'm still able to edit and publish this video. Secret Sand has been a blast. I highly recommend you watch the build video from Alan, link in the description. And from there, you should be able to get to all the other Santa build projects. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Thanks for watching and have a merry and safe Christmas.